this, nothing will ever be the same. Ever! Hey, I'm Tracy Thornton, and I'm the founder and creator of Pan Rocks. It was a real pleasure to meet Tracy. We were introduced through a mutual friend, Mark Schulman. Um, I was having coffee with Mark, and as I was leaving, Tracy was walking in, and um, he told me a little bit about what he did, and he gave me a few CDs, and I checked it out, and um, as soon as he explained what he was doing, basically playing steel drums with a rock band, uh, I knew that sonically it had to be really huge. Let's throw away the idea that the steel pan is only a soundscape for a Caribbean beach backdrop. It can be heavy, it can be crazy aggressive. A couple months ago, we did a show at the Whiskey with myself, Tracy, Amanda, and Ted, along with Steven playing drums. And that was uh, produced by Matt Starr that night at the Whiskey. And that was the first time that Matt got to see the project in person with rock and roll and steel drums. You can explain to somebody, oh yeah, we have a rock band, they're playing Cashmere by Led Zeppelin, and then there's 30 to 100 steel pan drummers behind them. But it's really hard to imagine that until you hear that. And often what happens is I've played these recordings for people and they say, oh, that's great. Yeah, where are the drums? Because they're thinking it's going to be, you know, and, it's, and the reality is I'm like, no, all that stuff that sounds like a symphony, that's the steel drums. The idea of Pan Rocks Project LA was to get out there and get into a major studio get some major musicians, and to create the audio that I've been hearing in my head all of these years. So now we don't have to explain to the listener what we're trying to accomplish. First thought was, okay, we need to get a great band. And so Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction had already been working with Tracy, and, and Stephen's been real supportive of this from the beginning. Uh, Billy Sheehan on bass, and uh, Tracy Guns on guitar, and also Bruce Kulik on guitar. We added Emil and Daryl the uh, Russian cellists from America's Got Talent. I had done some gigs with them in the past and, and they play rock and metal on these electric cellos, so we had them join us uh, on a couple songs. The Pan Rocks Project LA really isn't that revolutionary. It's going to change your mind about the steel pan and the art form because there's still so many people that see this instrument as a novelty instrument. I am always excited to do new things with the instrument I'm familiar with. A lot of people don't even know what sound that they like. They don't know that sound they hear in that one song is a steel drum. They don't know that song, that sound in their favorite rap song is a steel drum. And I think this is gonna be an exposure to more people when there's electric guitar and electric bass and some crazy rock drums added to our whole experience. Although it's, it's a steel drum with a rock band, to me, it needed to sound more like an orchestra. That's one of the reasons we included Cashmere on this project. Cashmere already has an orchestral feel. But when you put the steel pans behind it, it gives it more power and even makes that song even more epic. And it's a perfect example of Marian rock and roll music with the steel pan. It just kicks it into another gear and it just works. It's an instrument that's part of an orchestra that can play any type of music. Anything that brings more music to more people is a great thing. Musicians, more than anything else, love music. And if there's a new way to do something that hasn't been done before, that they haven't done before themselves, they're always really excited to do it. This is just a door that you haven't seen open yet. The network of people that he has, it's, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. And we had players from all over the country and all over the world. Matt said we should have 25 pan players. I was like, Matt, dude, 25 pan players. I've been doing this 20, 25 years, man. I can get you 25 pan players like that. And I thought he was kind of exaggerating, but I realized, in fact, he wasn't. Let's do 50. Let's do 100. For sessions, you're dealing with logistics, but this was the first time that I was dealing with square footage. It was like, man, we got to take in consideration the dimensions of the studio. So I was like, all right, man, we'll, we'll do 25, including me, 26. I met Tracy about six months ago at PASIC, and uh, he started talking about the Pan Rocks project, told me all about it. You want to go hang out with some rockers in Los Angeles for a few days? And I immediately said yes. And when he contacted me, I was like, I don't really know Tracy. Uh, 
seems kind of weird. Tracy had talked to me a couple months ago and mentioned that he wanted to do some Pan Rocks recording and I was like, sure, any excuse I can to go on a trip would be awesome. Just, just get me there, let's do this now. People flying in, driving in, taking off of work, postponing other commitments so that they could be in LA with Tracy, with us, to take part in this recording session. My name is Glenn Rousey. I play a set of four pan, the quadraphonic, that I drove from Morgantown, West Virginia, to LA. I'm in Chicago currently, uh, getting a transfer flight over to LA. I just graduated from Miami University, super pumped, and uh, I skipped walking across the stage and that ridiculous dress. I put in three sick days at work and this has been pretty great so far. I originally thought it was just going to be a small group, you know, like five or six people. So when he told me that it was going to be big and something totally different, I was just blown, like blown away. The PAN community is such a tight-knit community. I knew when I called a lot of these PAN players that they would come out here to LA and be 110% in. And most of these PAN players in the room have done PAN Rocks events with me in the past. So they knew the vibe of the whole project and I really wanted that spirit to be in the room. Hi, I'm Stephen Perkins, and I play drums on the fantastic project called Pan Rocks, which was me, Billy Sheehan, and Tracy Guns as the core rock band and then, of course, 45 pan drummers led by the great Tracy Thornton. Now, my job was to play just behind the beat, laid back a little, leave room for Billy, leave room for all the fingers and hands. When you have that many people hitting things and you're one of them, you really want to stay out of the way. So I try to hold back a little bit and I was really, really impressed with Tracy Guns. One of the great guitar players. I've known him since 1986. Yeah. And then of course, Matt Starr, one of the great drummers, great mustaches, a good voice, and a killer organizer, great producer. And this thing was so cool because we're doing Kiss songs, Zeppelin songs, Jane's Addiction songs, and surrounded by the vibe of all those people moving their hands and dancing. And my job was to stay out of the way, play just behind the beat, so all those hands had room. And Billy Sheehan's hands, which, forget it. I love to play with him some more, he's amazing. So that was my experience. It was big, it was loud, and I'm very proud. Stephen Perkins signing off for Pan Rocks. And Stephen, if it weren't for you putting steel drums in the song Jane Says back in 1988, none of this would be happening. So thanks, brother. I was requested by Pan Rocks to be a part of their project. You know, steel drums, doing rock and roll. And I have to admit, I think it's really cool. First of all, I was thinking like, where's a room big enough to have a band and you know, all these pan players and then record it and all this stuff. So I was really confused before I came. I was a little worried about the rock star guys coming to the room, not because they weren't going to play their parts right. I knew they were going to kill it. I just wanted everyone in the room to be as excited as I was and the pan players were to be there. I wanted to get guys that would really appreciate what this was and not just be coming in and, and recording and, and doing what they do, which is exceptional, but guys that would really get it. Meeting all of them is pretty much a dream come true. To be part of this and have them on this project is not really real, but it's real. The most exciting part about being involved with those musicians here, to me, is the fact that they haven't done this before. I apologize if that sounds conceited, <laughs> But uh, that's probably the coolest concept to me, that there's something they haven't done. I'm most excited about meeting the other pan players around the country. I know it sounds bad towards those rockers. I got to meet all these amazing people from Canada and from the West Coast and from Austin and Vegas and all these different places. I ended up really loving Tracy Guns. We were jaded before we came here and did this. It was really cool to work with all the different artists on this. Everybody traveled from all around the world. Forget all the cliche and the stereotype of the rock and roll star. 
They were professionals, they were musicians, musicians, and their professionalism rubbed off on every one of us in the room. My favorite tune to record was Dane Bramage, which is an original song uh, by Tracy. We ended up doing one of my original tunes on this project, and those rocker dudes, they actually liked it. And who knew this would be like, this was like my favorite one. The, the uh, Jane's Addiction one? The, well, no, the original. Oh, the original, I know. You know what I mean? Uh, one unique uh, uh, original song that was pretty wild. <laughs> The most incredible thing to me about this project is we recorded everything in a day. We have musicians coming in from all over the place, 30 of them, a lot of them who didn't know each other, and just formed this amazing organism and got this project done in a day. It was just incredible. So we recorded the songs, and that's you know fairly typical for the three of us guys. And then when we went to film the videos with the pans, man, that, that was like the experience of a lifetime. It's just really cool to see a group of people that all have a passion for what they do and collectively bring that energy and that spirit together. And everybody was really blown away with it. All the players, as well as anyone that I've shown this to, everyone's really excited about it because there's nothing like this. I've been working with Tracy Thornton over the past several years and building Pen Rocks to what it is today. And for this session to finally go down was a huge step forward. It's, it's an incredible opportunity to really showcase to the world what the instrument's capable of. To hear it back, it's just, it's just mind blowing, you know, the way that the steel drums blend in with the guitar and the bass. It's just a natural fit sonically. So this project's huge just because it validifies what we really care about. You know, I can see this thing being a new thing. You know, and I know that Tracy's been working on this for like 20 years, but when people see it and hear it, it's brand new music, man, it's incredible. This project has been like really eye-opening as far as uh, just like where the sound of Pan can go. There's really no limit to where we can go with this. Um, it's just naturally a very large idea. And so you could perform at an arena anywhere in the world. You could perform at the remains of the Colosseum in Rome. I hope this spreads around and the, and the organization gets bigger and bigger. Maybe with a thousand steel drums playing something at a Super Bowl would be pretty cool. I think South America would need it. Africa wants it. Asia needs it. North America. Antarctica. Let's get cold. This pan thing, is it hasn't even gotten to the surface yet, so um, I'm really excited to be part of it and grateful, and can't wait for you all to see it. It's an honor to be here. It's a pleasure, and enjoy the record. Pan Marks. Well, what a unique experience. And I just say carpe diem. So that's, the, we're done, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Good one.